Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our webcast today. Uh, today's webinar is titled, How to Install and Size Lithium Storage. Your questions will be answered at the end of the webinar, so please save those questions towards the end. And now I'd like to welcome Fortress Power Chief Technology Officer, Eric Wang, to begin the webinar. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Firstly, thank you for signing up uh, our uh, webinar. We know this is a difficult time, and then uh, my personal also uh, Fortress Power Company wish you and your family stay safe and healthy. Uh, just a little bit of background about myself. So uh, uh, I hold a master degree of chemistry. Uh, and uh, in the past 15 years, I spent the majority of my time in the automotive business and also uh, in the tier one automotive company, and then uh, a few years in the renewable energy uh, business. So I deal with the wind energy, also uh, the uh, energy storage system. So uh, we're going to talk about the three major topics today. So first one, uh, uh, we'll see, uh, we want to introduce ourselves a little bit, and then uh, we'll do a quick uh, comparison about uh, the traditional uh, battery technology versus the uh, lithium. And then we're going to talk about the, the specific chemistry we're using, what is the difference, differences uh, between uh, our chemistry with the others. And then we'll spend the majority of the time into the design guide, installation guide, and the last portion, so that's uh, it's also important, we'll do the installation. So we want to talk about the parameter setting. So that's, uh, we will quickly talk about the, uh, how to charge and discharge the uh, lithium batteries specifically. All right, let's just start from ourselves. Uh, we are PA-based company, and uh, our headquarters is in the Great Philadelphia area. The township is Southampton. We have 3,000 square feet the facility for R&D, sales, and the logistics. Uh, basically, everything we design and verify testing in this facility. And we do have a logistics center in California and Florida uh, for the West Coast sales and also uh, covered uh, South American customers. Uh, we've been uh, installed system uh, quite for a long time. So worldwide, we have 45 megawatt uh, installed worldwide, roughly. Uh, for the uh, PA local railway system, uh, we've been building up a very strong relationship with them. So we are basically primary uh, battery uh, backup system supplier for the local railway uh, uh, company. And uh, that's usually the highest concern on safety and so on. So we fulfill the requirement very nicely. So our product, we carry three major products in our catalog. So they are differentiate, uh, they differentiate from, uh, uh, from each other with uh, the ca capacity and also input and output powers. From left to right, you see uh, the E-Volt is the product we're selling in the market uh, with uh, high input and output car power and also with highest capacity with uh, uh, 18.5 kilowatt hours. Then the second one is uh, 10 kilowatt hours and the five kilowatt hours. That's full fuel the medium size storage system and the smaller uh, storage system. So I'll give you a little bit more details uh, when we come into the uh, uh, spec sheet uh, comparison of our own product. So those are the three major uh, catalog product for us. If you buy once, if you buy something off shelf, then that's the battery you want to pick from our catalog. It doesn't mean we couldn't do uh, customized uh, batteries. If you have a special demand, uh, for different applications, you're welcome to contact us. So we would like to help you uh, to fulfill customer requirements. Uh, so by the way, so I also want to mention our new product. So this product is going to launch in uh, June for the beta testing. So uh, the battery will be built for more versatile applications, but primarily still for the home energy storage. So this system can stack up to 15 uh, pieces, and then each of them have a five kilowatt hours uh, 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 capa uh, battery capa uh, energy capacity in it. So it has uh, the uh, smart uh, real, uh, sp smart uh, contact based uh, BMS. So we build uh, the uh, close uh, loop communication with um, uh, multiple inverter currently uh, in discussion and then we're doing our engineering work now. So the battery has a good amount of uh, memory chips in it. So it will take uh, some uh, data log and uh, also it has a built in Wi-Fi function. So you can do a remote con uh, uh, monitoring. Uh, the the way we build it, you can do uh, either uh, floor standing, wall mount. We have accessory for that, and then you can also do uh, buy a, just a standard 24 inches uh, rack system, if you like. But just uh, you want to do the uh, shelf mount or rack mount uh, in the system. It's more versatile 
And also we designed the system to be able to uh, accomplish uh, more uh, top tasks, like if you want to use on a boat, marine and so on. So because there's a high IP rating, IP65, so most of uh, the uh, uh, environment you should be able to safe to use uh, uh, the, uh, these batteries. It's coming up, so uh, you're welcome to uh, contact us and want to get one or two samples uh, for testing. Uh, here is the uh, detailed comparison with uh, uh, what I just mentioned. So the uh, it goes with the energy capacity and also with uh, the, uh, uh, the the input output power. So the major difference is that the first two ones, so e volt and e flex, they are very stackable. So you can stack up to 15. If you have special requirement, we can program it into up to 50 on e flex even. So. Those are more uh, smart BMS, has a lot of internal communication on it. So the uh, LFP10 and the 5 would typically to deal, to use the battery to deal with uh, the smaller system and then uh, a little easy going situation. So uh, that's things we can, uh, those two products we can stack up to uh, two. Uh, if you have a special requirement, let us know. So we, we can stack up up to uh, three or four uh, based on a special setup. So uh, just let us know, we'll give you a detailed instruction how to stack up more batteries. Uh, there will be a parameter setting and also the, the way how you wire the system into your uh, inverter. Uh, we're, we're gonna talk about a little bit more in depth uh, for the, uh, uh, for the uh, BMS technology. So. Uh, uh, MOSFET is uh, kind of new, but not very new. MOSFET has been out for such a long time. It's just uh, get more material now. So uh, it's a, a great contribution. The people have the MOSFET to do the um, microelectronic things. So we use that also to build the BMS system. That's for LLP 5 and then 10. So it's 5 kilowatt hours and 10 kilowatt hour battery pack. And the e volt we still stay with the Montpetier technology, so the mechanical contact based uh, 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 BMS system. So what it does, it has also smart uh, uh, embedded computer in the in the battery pack, control the whole circuit open and close. Uh, on the battery cell side, so the five and the ten, so we use the cylindrical um, battery cell. And then for the 18.5 E-volt and the 5.4 E-flex, we use a prismatic uh, cell. That's the major differences on that. So you don't have to remember everything. So everything is built and tested uh, to our spec. So the only thing you want to uh, consider when you choose the product is, uh, do you want to have a communication? Do you want to have a communication uh, for parallel setting? And then uh, do you want to do a little bit remote monitoring, those things? So those are in the more advanced data. Uh, BMS technology, which you will see 18.5 and 5.4. So here is an example of our live monitoring system on the e volt So it gave you a good rating. So for the uh, voltage and the amps, uh, current SOC, and then the power in and out at this moment. So it's very convenient for installers. So I know if you hook up one, one battery, that's not an issue. If you hook up a five or six battery at the same time, so what we want to do to do is you always want the, the battery stay at a very similar SOC. You want the battery stay at the, the similar voltage as well, because once you connect the different voltage battery, one start charging another. So that might damage the battery cell and also damage the, uh, uh, the BMS system because uh, the internal resistance between two batteries is very low. So that's what, what we don't want to see. Uh, most of the battery uh, company will, uh, will ask you to uh, pre-charge the battery into the same voltage before even you wear up the system. So for the uh, smart BMS system, so we have this live monitoring is, is enable you to look at the screen and you know if the system uh, already ready for parallel or not. In addition, so when you do the parallel setting, so when you set up a master and slave, uh, according to our instruction, it really doesn't matter you have a too much, you have a, the voltage differences. Maybe, for example, you see one battery is at 51 volt, the other is at 52.5 or 53. Usually the, bat, the other battery manufacturer will tell you, okay, you have to pre-charge uh, the uh, battery to the same voltage. And then that takes quite a while to charge it up. I mean, you wanna save your time. If you have a the master slave set up as our instruction, you can basically just commission the system as it is and then uh, just walk away. The battery itself, 
battery system itself, for example, you have three, you will tell each other, are you ready to go or not? So the, basically the system will do the work for you. It's, we call it, you can walk away without any concern. Uh, the system already up and running. At least one battery already gave the power to the uh, inverter and then uh, the other two batteries and then will catch up when the voltage drop to the certain voltage. When they come close to 0.5 volt, so the, the battery will be parallel in the same system. Uh, so that's about our product. Then we're gonna look at the, the, the comparison of different technology. So we talk about why we choose the lithium batteries. Just overall, we'll talk about the lithium at the moment. So lithium has different chemical material and then compared to the traditional lead acid, so flooded lead acid, they call it the one state uh, lead acid, AGM, nickel iron. Uh, so the first information you wanna receive is, so the, uh, the lithium battery is much better in every single way compared to the traditional uh, battery technology. I'm not saying you have to use lithium for everything, anything. There's a certain cost come with the initial investment. So initial investment is higher on the lithium battery, but if you calculate the, the uh, long-term energy cost per kilowatt, so actually lithium is cheaper. So if you have a simple application, it doesn't bother to use that many cycles. I mean, lead acid is the way to go because uh, the situa situation you have, but for the home energy storage, so lithium battery is the way to go. Efficiency is much higher. So most of the traditional one, traditional uh, battery give you 80 to 85%. And then uh, like AGM, they, they, get, they did something different in it. So give you a little bit more percentage on the efficiency. And then uh, the cycle for the uh, lithium battery in average much higher than the uh, uh, lead asset. And then from the cycle, ca calculate the years, so how long the battery will last. And then the total uh, energy output is much higher too. For the uh, total cost of ownership, so per kilowatt, you look at the, the lithium battery. Uh, so in average, it's much lower than the other uh, battery technology, specifically on the lithium phosphate. So it is uh, much lower uh, than uh, the other technology. Uh, most important is uh, it's maintenance free and then uh, relative safe, right? So, but you, we'll talk about the, the different uh, uh, lithium chemistry as well. So LLP, that is our chemistry has been approved the most, uh, uh, the, the safest uh, chemistry in the lithium batteries. And uh, in terms of the uh, output powers, lithium give you a consistent power because of uh, the uh, uh, the flight charge and discharge curve. So you always keep uh, the voltage between 51 to 53. So you will see minimum voltage drop. So that means the battery output powers is always continuous at the same levels. In compared to the uh, lead asset, so their curve, uh, their, their voltage will drop significantly during the charge, uh, char discharge cycles. So you will lose some of the power output from the uh, lead asset. That's an, another uh, big plus for the lithium battery. It increases the efficiency and it used to also give you uh, the, uh, uh, the consistent power output. There are many, many uh, advantage of lithium battery compared to the lead asset. For example, it's not listed on my slide. For example, it support faster charge and discharge you can discharge the things to 100% even, right? So the high efficiency is super, super high. And then in the uh, traditional lead asset, so it's always venting the, the, the gases. And then uh, you, you will get, the, not only you have to set up a venting system, you have to, uh, the, the gas will erosion the terminal uh, of the batteries. That's some, something you'll never see on the lithium. There's a lot of uh, information you can search online here, I just list out a few major points uh, you want to pay attention to. If you're an installer, it's a great way you can convince your customer to uh, uh, change to lithium. If you are the homeowner in this seminar, so this helps you to build up the confidences uh, to use uh, the uh, lithium battery. So basically, I think you will never regret to uh, use the lithium battery for the energy storage system uh, versus the, uh, uh, the traditional lead asset. Okay, then we talk about the lithium only. So 
uh, we list out a few lithium uh, chemistry. So there's more uh, lithium chemistry in the market, but that's a primary three kind of uh, lithium uh, chemistry. So uh, lithium phosphate and then uh, lithium cobalt, I've called an MC and then uh, lipo. So there are just in general, so the uh, life cycle lithium phosphate is uh, uh, higher. And then uh, the uh, uh, just in terms of safety, so the lithium uh, phosphate is the safest uh, chemistry we have seen in the market in the lithium battery. So the lithium phosphate is more tolerable in terms of the temperature and also overcharge and over discharge. And I will show you one or two pictures when we do the uh, uh, testing. So what's the differences uh, in terms of the, the, fire, uh, the fire concern? Uh, here is the, the uh, uh, penetration test. So basically, uh, we use a pin to penetrate the battery cell itself. So on the left side is a lithium on the rest, a lithium phosphate. On the right side is NMC. So you see the NMC catch fire right away. So the flammable, flammable uh, temperature is much lower than the uh, lithium phosphate. A lithium phosphate uh, usually get a little bit smoke when you do this test, but it's not as bad as NMC. I'm not saying that lithium phosphate is the best the chemistry in the world. There is a reason so NMC developed so well in the market because uh, the NMC has better energy density. So the car manufacturer like Tesla and RG, also the primary car uh, manufacturers, a supplier for batteries. So they also go with these technical things with NMC because uh, the car is more sensitive about the weight that they carry. So the NMC give them an advantage of the energy density. But for the energy storage, so ILP is the uh, uh, lithium phosphate way to go. So it's really not that concern if we just spare up uh, some space for uh, a little bit bigger batteries uh, than the uh, NMC. But in compared to your lead asset, the size of this uh, lithium battery is just one third of it. So if you already installed a lot of uh, light asset batteries uh, with the same capacity, you don't have to worry about it. So you can switch to the LB right away because the size will fit perfectly, save you a lot of rooms. So we make a summary on this. So the lithium phosphate is safe and then also uh, produce more power for you. And then the longevity is longer. And in terms of uh, the uh, total cost ownership, you're cheaper uh, for the homeowners. Uh, we'll come to the uh, most important part. The second portion is the design guide. And so we're going to talk about the, how do you design the system and the, how, do you, uh, uh, how do you size your system correctly. So we have our uh, sizing tools. Uh, it's usually uh, we give it for free to our um, uh, authorized dealers and also installers. You can use that uh, uh, as a tool to size up your system. We'll talk about that tools later. And then we'll talk about the first, so the uh, compatible inverter research. So we are compatible with uh, most of uh, the uh, uh, low voltage, 48 voltage uh, battery based inverter, uh, which include a lot of big name has been out in the market for a long time. For example, Schneider, Outback, uh, Mechanism, and the SMA, Soark, uh, Victron, uh, Morningstar, and Midnight Solar. So there are some, we can do AC and DC couple, and there's some only can do DC couple. It's all about the, the uh, function of the uh, inverter. It's really nothing about our uh, batteries. So when you pick a system, a size system for a customer, you just want to pay attention to uh, the nodes. So by the way, so we'll distribute the, the uh, presentation to everybody uh, who signed up at today's meeting. Uh, so you don't have to take notes on that. So we're gonna send out this uh, slide later. So here is an example. So we did uh, the AC-DC couple. We said we were good with Schneider. So this is the XW Pro version. Uh, Schneider has been out in the market over 10 years. And it used to be uh, uh, the other company. So Schneider bought, out, bought them out uh, some years ago. Uh, and then uh, this product has been uh, in the market for a long time. It's very robust. We did a lot of a project with them. Uh, they can stack up to four for the split phase, 120 and 240. And if you have a three phase system, they can step up, stack up to nine. So that means each phase you have three inverter on it. Uh, so the, uh, uh, throughout the year, they develop a lot of uh, new functions. 
uh, like uh, the uh, all the starter generators and then support off grid, support the selling back to the grid, uh, all kind of things. If you read through their manuals, you will be able to uh, configure the system to the purpose you want. Uh, the most important, a lot of DC AC coupling, so uh, uh, so that's to make this inverter even more versatile. So this example is when we do the system with them. So we have four E volt connect with uh, their uh, system and did a, a DC couple. You see the charge controller and so on. Now this is only an uh, example. The reason I bring it up because I'm going to use Schneider as one of the examples uh, how we set up uh, our our system. So for example, in this. Uh, in today's uh, let's say training exercise, we're gonna do uh, we're gonna use a we're gonna talk about a lot of uh, about 6.8 kilowatt, uh, which is uh, I believe is XW6848 uh, model model code uh, Schneider inverter. Okay, size up your system. Um, there's four step you want to go through. First is you want to look at okay what do you want to put on the critical panel so. Beside your main panel, so whatever you you will think your customer will be the uh, bare minimum bare minimum that they want to hook up in their critical load uh, circuit. Uh, that's something you want to understand first, and then uh, we want to calculate the total usage based on that. So, 10 kilowatt hours, five kilowatt hour, five kilowatt kilowatt hours, and so on and so on. And then we will look at the okay, how many battery you need. And then we'll look into some details afterwards. So we're gonna dive into this case and then we'll see, okay, how do you choose the battery for what purpose? Okay, then you wanna estimate, okay, what's the daily power from your PV system as well? It looks like a compli complicated, but there's really a, I will carry this question, ask yourself three questions all the time when you size the system. At least this will put you in the ballpark. You always ask your time, ask yourself three times power, right? First power is uh, what is the continuous continuous powers, right? Is the 65k, is the 6.5kW or 2kW, 3kW? That would determine so what inverter you want to choose, and then you want to look at your abnormal uh, moment. For example, if you have a uh, you have a heat pump, if you have uh, the uh, well pump, or some major appliances, it will put the uh, Put the power out of a critical panel. You want to look at that. We call it the, so the surge powers. So peak power, second power. You want to ask yourself. The third is the total needed power. So I make the power. It's actually this one. We just calculate. We want to see. Okay, what is estimated the total energy I want to use for this critical panel? So ask yourself three times power. You will get used to yourself. You have a conversation with any, any customers, and you can ask them three question. Basically figure out what is the ballpark uh, uh, system configurations. I will carry through this, uh, this is three questions uh, throughout my uh, design guideline uh, section. Uh, a quick introduction about our sizing tool. So the sizing tool is uh, a big database. Uh, we build in a lot of our uh, inverter company, this, our partners, we carry their product tool and we build their specification in it. And also we build our battery specification in it. So what you need to do is just uh, understand what's on the critical panel and understand what is uh, their power rating. And if you fill in those information, I think you will get all those three factors as I just mentioned. You will see running a watt, right? That's the continuous power you're gonna use. For example, this one's 1.636, obviously too, too small, but just uh, for example, so you're gonna pull 1.6 kW from the inverter all the time, and then uh, surge power. Right, that calculate uh, okay, what is the maximum power at surge time? For example, if you open up multiple appliance at the same time, you have well pump as well, then that's give you run about 4.6, let's say five kilowatts. So you want to size up a little bit, 10% higher. That's always I propose you to do. So you look at those two factors, and then you have a total energy you want to use. So 18 k. 18 kilowatt hours, basically, you, you want to need. Those three information just give you a good uh, information about how big the system should be, what kind of inverter I should select. I will go a little bit in depth on the next section for the calculation. You will see uh, a lot of uh, equation in these uh, examples, uh, but it really come down to the three question I just I just uh, mentioned. So we we'll take this. Uh, as an example, so this is the 
uh, example, this is the Schneider system. And then we have a two charge controller, right? So it's hot. MPPT 60, that's 100. The uh, maximum charge rating is 60 amps. Uh, maximum input is 3,000 uh, watt. And we want to see, okay, with our LFP10 products, so how many we need? So that's the question we want to answer. Well, let's come into the calculation. All right, this is a, a summary just uh, uh, of the whole calculation. We'll use uh, uh, all of the formulas to set up a system. I quickly uh, uh, I quickly go through the, the, the calculation. So number one is uh, basically we want to understand that the total energy of the, uh, the total energy usage at the customer. And then we want that this number, uh, we want our battery bank size is 20% over their uh, total energy needed because uh, we want to keep the battery longevity and then we want that you discharge the battery maximum to 80%. So we don't, we don't want that we discharge the battery every time to 0%. That's gonna short our uh, battery life cycles. Secondly, you wanna check the uh, over current protection. So that's what I just mentioned. So we wanna look at the, uh, uh, that, that this is the, for uh, to match the uh, if the uh, battery match with uh, the inverter and the third question is basically we'll answer the two question continuous power and then we also want to understand the third power on these things. Uh, there's uh, some of the uh, inverter company they have their charge controller already built in the built into the uh, uh, inverter especially for those uh, transformative uh, inverters. Uh, but the Schneider system, you have to have a separate consideration about their charge controller. So how much uh, how much PV uh, power is coming to the battery bank and so on. We'll talk about also AC system. There's some special technical notes. I wanna give it to you when you set up system that we'll talk about in the last slide in this section. Uh, let's use those uh, equation to calculate uh, uh, whatever the question asks about how many battery we need and what inverter we should choose. So ask yourself three times of those power questions will help you to get there. So first we ask ourselves, okay, how many uh, battery capacity we need? So we use the total energy needed. For example, your customer need uh, 10, 15 kilowatt hours and so on. Uh, here we want to have uh, the total needed energy and then divided by the total uh, capacity of the battery, which we put on the nameplate, right? And then you want this less than, uh, uh, we see 90%. And in this case, you put it in, uh, in the uh, 3,000 cycles for the battery. If you want to put up to 6,000 cycles, then you should go with uh, the 80% calculation. Just the number here, you want to look at uh, what's the right size battery bank for you. Second, so, this is the important step too. We want to match the uh, battery breaker to the inverter breaker because uh, we want whatever happened in the system, we want the, uh, the DC breaker on the inverter trip first and then the battery trip second because usually the uh, inverter is more sensitive in terms of the problem because uh, you have a more system, more power connect to the uh, inverter. It's in and out from grid and also to your appliance and so on. The first level production is always should be uh, the inverter and the second level should be the battery itself. So the uh, that, that in that in that saying, so we should uh, size up the, uh, we look at our breaker size, for, for example, on the LLP 10, so it's 150 amps delay version of breaker. So if I have a tool of them, it's 300 amps. It's actually just greater than the Schneider 250 amps DC breaker. If you only choose one, then you see 150 amps and then 250 amps. So basically that's uh, the wrong way to size it. So you want that this ampere, amperes rating is higher than the uh, inverter. The reason is if uh, when you pull high current out of uh, high power out of uh, the, uh, the battery, and then that battery is going to trip. If the battery DC, DC breaker tripped, then it's going to stop the whole system. So it doesn't make sense. You need to size up the uh, battery size, DC breaker size bigger than the uh, bigger than the uh, uh, inverter. 
just very important notes here. I spend a bit more time here. It will make it easy. There's a lot of calculation behind it in terms of a BMS setup and configurations, but we make it easier. Just look at a DC breaker to DC breaker. You want to match all over the DC breaker on the inverter. So that's what I said. If you have two, then you're good. If you have one, that's two less. But if you choose to go with e volt, so the DC breaker actually match 250 to 250, not a concern. This is the talk about only LLP10. Okay, then uh, we'll also look at uh, the uh, uh, match inverter rating to the max the current rating of the battery. So that's another important factor too. So when you look at a continuous uh, power rating on the inverter and the continuous power rating on the uh, uh, on the battery. So I have the specification slide uh, just in the first section. That's your cheat sheet. So you want to look at that continuous output powers. You want that output power total. So if you have two batteries, you add up two, two batteries continuous power rating. And you want that the power rating greater than the uh, inverter continuous power rating. The same thing for the third power tool. You want that the third power continues, a third power rating bigger than the inverter third power ratings. In that way, you will keep the system running and also uh, uh, it's really good for the longevity of the battery bank. So you want also, uh, uh, for example, this one, we uh, look at the, the uh, 6.8 kilowatt on the, uh, uh, on the inverter. That's uh, the continuous uh, output powers. For example, if we pull 100% electric from the battery bank, so continuously, so it will pull 160 amps from, from the battery bank. But the LLP 10, so each battery will give a continuous power rating at 100 amps. So two of them will give a 200 amps. It's much bigger than the 136 amps. So your system design is pretty good and also keep the, uh, uh, the system safe and keep uh, the battery healthy too. And on the third rating, the same thing. So we look at 300 amp versus uh, 240 amps. Uh, so 300 is greater than 240. So it's a pretty good sizing for two battery with one uh, uh, XW Pro inverter in this case. So again, so ask yourself the question. So what about the, the continuous power rating and what about the third reading? So we already talked about the total energy we need. Now we talk about the continuous power and then uh, the third power. So everything matched and you're good to go. So here is the final, final check on those things. Uh, in the uh, Schneider, uh, we want to also consider, we want to consider two things. One is uh, if you charge from the grid, so you, you use the inverter itself, the inverter itself has uh, some setup you can uh, charge your battery bank from the grid. Or there is a, if you want to charge from PV system, then PV panels, then uh, you need to size up your PV charge controllers. So this part, this part is the, uh, how do you uh, size up your uh, battery bank uh, to look at the, uh, what is the maximum charge current, right? From, from, the, uh, from the charge controller. You have a two charge controller, then you calculate two. If you have three charge controller, you calculate three, the same thing. So you want that the, the battery's uh, charging rating is greater than the, uh, than the uh, whatever the charge controller can give it to the battery bank. Right? So the same story as uh, we just talked about in the last equation. So basically here talk about only on the charge controllers. So for the, uh, AC coupling, uh, I bet a lot of people uh, uh, are doing the AC coupling for grid tie system. Uh, if your customer asks you to, to do the AC couple with off grid system, uh, I propose you just go with DC couple direct, right? So if you have a customer already have a, a, a PV system and also grid tie system, uh, I propose you can do the, uh, do the AC couple system. Uh, AC customer system uh, has one potential issue is uh, when the uh, PV panel production is greater or much over the, uh, uh, the, uh, the production of uh, much over than what you have for the, uh, what you need in the house. 
So you will have a little bit problem. The technology, because uh, the, the power need to go somewhere. So if there's nowhere to go, it's gonna tr trigger some def uh, uh, faulty uh, errors and then shut down the system for some reasons. So the technology uh, uh, inverter, the technology like uh, the energy storage based inverter, like Schneider or the uh, Outback, so they all use the frequency shifting technology. So what it does is uh, the uh, inverter will shift the frequency and then uh, just try to cheat the P PV inverter and let it shut down and stop produce uh, too much power to the system. Okay, in that way, so the best practice when you size up a system is when you uh, look at uh, the PV system they already have, right? PV inverter and then the PV size, you want the PV at reach size is smaller than the hybrid inverter full load powers. In addition, the PV array size, right, you want also uh, uh, smaller than the battery max charge rate. So in this way, you set up your system correctly, so you will, to a certain extent, avoid the problem. Uh, there is, will be some days, so the PV production is over and so on, but it's not as bad as uh, uh, if you set up system opposite way, you get everything smaller on the storage side, and everything bigger on the PV side. So that's not the best practice. Here, I just want to quickly uh, bring this topic up. So the key takeaway from this slide, when you size up your system for the AC coupling grid tie, you want the, uh, your storage section greater than the uh, existing PV and the PV inverter system. Second is if you have an off-grid system, they want to do the uh, uh, energy storage. So I think we should convince them to use the DC couple, which is a better way and easier. Okay, so we talk about our sizing tool and how you fill up the information. Here is just quick uh, a uh, catch up, see uh, what is uh, the uh, uh, total energy we need on the critical panel. So based on our assumption, we say there's a couple of things we want hooked up, uh, refrigerators, light, and then some pump. Water well pump, we calculate that the power is 18, 18 kilowatt hours uh, roundabout. So we probably want to select a battery bank to uh, relative, relative close to this, uh, uh, to this uh, uh, power capacity. Um, then we also look at the, the uh, overall PV array and also the battery bank uh, powers. So if we go with two LLP10s, so we get a 20 kilowatt hours. And then uh, if we calculate this 90% uh, of DOD, which will give you uh, 3,000 cycles on the batteries. If you want to size up a little bigger, you can choose the three, and then uh, that will uh, make sure the longevity uh, put you up to the 6,000 cycles on the uh, uh, battery uh, life expendencies. Uh, here is basically we're coming to the conclusion. So we, we probably need a two, uh, we need a two, battery bank and then to uh, match with uh, one uh, Schneider inverter. This is a, just an example on it. So you want to consider your PV production during the day and what the left over, it will go to the battery bank. So th this is just a simple way you, you think about uh, your uh, system design. As I just mentioned, ask your time three times power. That's what will tell you, uh, will put you in the ballpark, right? Ask, you, ask yourself always, okay, what is a customer's continuous power consumption what is the third power? And then what is the total energy they need for the critical panel, right? not the overall system, whatever you put on the critical panels, that's what uh, you want to think about it. All right, uh, I'm gonna go into the next section uh, for the uh, installation guide. Uh, here is a simple, I think if you are installer on the line, if you are a uh, dealer on the line, more or less you understand what you need for the uh, for install the battery system. Uh, so all of our product use M8 terminal ring, so it's fairly available in the market. So you can buy anywhere, just make sure you buy high, high quality uh, battery uh, terminal ring. It give you very low resistances and then uh, won't get the corrosion on, problem on it. And then uh, for the uh, knockout side, knockout on the E-Volt and then also on the uh, LP10. So it's where the system under the cover. So there's a knockout. We, uh, uh, we have three sizes, right? three fourths and one inches and one quarter inches. Here is the cable selecting. Uh, my experience, you always size up a little bit bigger so the um, so that you can deal with uh, the more extreme cases. 
Uh, so most of the time uh, we look at the 150 amps, 100 amps, that's the uh, 120, 130 amp, 150 amp, that's where the range we always choose. So it depends on your customer. Again, this depends on our customer's consumption and so on. If your customer only draws three kilowatts consistently from the battery bank, you probably can go a little bit smaller size of the wires as well. Uh, commissioning, uh, we have a very detailed instruction for all of our products. So the, uh, here is just examples how you start commissioning your system. Um, so for the LFP5 and the LFP10, so once you get a system all hooked up, you want to first check your polarity on the uh, terminals. You make sure positive to positive, negative to negative, right? Before uh, you uh, turn on the whole system, the battery DC breaker should be on the off position. And then once you have everything ready, then you put them on the on position, then you can start up your uh, your inverter. So the system usually start uh, smoothly. There's more setup if you uh, choose to use our Evo system because uh, it's set up uh, for uh, easy parallel, parallel. And then uh, there's uh, some communication cable you need to uh, hook up. So we're gonna talk about here. So in the front button, you always uh, push the button on for six seconds. So with, we get rid of the just push on and off function because uh, that's sometimes that people mistakenly uh, just shut off the system. So we have the button set it up for six seconds. You can turn on the LED, LCD. Once the LCD is display on, that means the uh, internal circuit is on. So the only thing uh, you need to uh, put this battery on the on the live is uh, the DC breaker. So usually the way you set it up is always you put the you you wear up your system, keep the battery shut off, and then uh, you put the the uh, DC breaker on the inverter on first, and then you put the the uh, DC breaker on the battery on second, and then you start up the uh, the battery with the six with the uh, on and off button. What it does is uh, this uh, smart BMS has uh, uh, quite a good pre-charge function. So we try to uh, uh, use the pre-charge function to power up your inverter first, because when the inverter started, it always has uh, the inrush current. So we want we don't want to trigger the, the faulty, let's say, uh, short circuit, the protection for the battery. So if you follow our procedure, you'll be able to get around it. So it's this procedure just let the pre-charge function take in, uh, kick in and then uh, help you to start the system smoothly. Uh, again, if you have a multiple EVO system, like two or three or more than two, this is not a big concern because the system build out is pretty robust. So the current out of uh, the inrush is not able to trigger the, uh, uh, the, the faulty protection of the BMS. Uh, bus bar. For sure, and then uh, if you have a multiple battery system, uh, we also prefer you have a, some kind of a combiner. So because of the DC power, you always deal with the heavy gauge of the cables. It's a little bit cumbersome if you try something different. So it's better you have a, a battery combiner. So it will save you a lot of time for installation. And for the later maintenance, it's gonna save customer a lot of time because low voltage system, they usually can handle it by themselves if uh, they want to do some simple troubleshooting and so on. So it depends on uh, your preference, but we prefer, we prefer, so we recommend you to use uh, the uh, uh, battery combiner or some, uh, some kind of bus bar to make your installation easier. Parallel the system. Uh, I don't want to go through all those things, Number, there's, there are two things important. So number one is you want to keep battery off and then put both on the same bus bar. Second most important thing is uh, uh, how you wear the system. So we, we prefer you use the same length of the battery cables, right, connect to the bus bar. So that will help you uh, to charge and discharge both batteries uh, in a balanced way. If you have a two, uh, batteries, I mean, you can do the DC chain, but make sure you put the power for both sides. So positive from one side and negative from the other side. There's a uh, multiple different way you can uh, make uh, uh, the charge and discharge more balanced, but the most easy way is you use the same length cable and connect the battery to the bus bar 
and bus bar go into the uh, inverter. That's the most efficient and quick, easy way, no matter for installation, also for the, um, for the later maintenance as well. Uh, we talk about that the, I want to uh, specifically talk about the, the uh, parallel EVOD system. Uh, so the EVOD has uh, uh, the CAN bus and then uh, RS-45 uh, in the, uh, on the batteries. So when you start to uh, connect one to another, you just make sure you have a DC, DC chain uh, connection on the uh, communication cables. And at the same time, you want to keep your DC breaker off and then uh, set up uh, your, for example, you have a two inverter, uh, you have two battery, uh, then you want to set up both battery as a slave two. And uh, you want to switch, turn off the battery BMS and then start up again so that the system will refresh itself. So now I'm at the slave status. And the same for the second batteries. So you want to turn it on and off and then, uh, once you hook up everything ready and then put your uh, wiring cable into the inverters, every system ready to go, then you want to change one of the batteries uh, uh, status to master, right? Once you set up a master, the battery actually is actively parallel itself. Two battery will connect to each other when the, in the allowed condition. So, but at least there's one battery uh, supply power to the inverter. Basically the system is already start up and running and then you don't have to worry about the second battery is in parallel or not. You can just walk away. And then the second battery will parallel in with the first battery when the condition allow them to do it. So usually uh, the voltage and the SOC is to a uh, element that the computer will calculate by themselves. Again, we have a more detailed instruction in our, in our uh, installation manual. So I know a lot of installers have a uh, little bit of issues here and there when they do the computer things on the uh, on the e vote but usually it, after um, a few minutes of phone call, we should be able to get over the issues. Uh, parameter setting. So that's the uh, last section of this uh, presentation. Before we talk about the parameter setting, I want the, everybody understand uh, how how the lithium battery is charged and the discharged. So for the charging and discharge, uh, we. So we, we, most of the inverter are built in the traditional three-phase charge, uh, let's say charge curves. So with spark charge and then also with the, the uh, uh, absorption. So the lithium battery actually, it, it's, that's one of the major differences between lithium and lead acid. So lead acid, you can charge with spark and to uh, maybe 50, 60%, I forgot the, the number on top of my head. Uh, the the rest of the capacity you need to charge them up with the absorption time. So usually have leave, leave it for two hours or three hours or even longer to make the battery fully charged. Actually, lithium batteries support the kind of uh, the supercharger function. So you can charge the battery all the way up with spark voltage, which should really reach run about eighty percent of the capacity. That's why we leave absorption time. You can relatively leave it a, a little bit longer or shorter. But if you, if you leave a few minutes, you're gonna do the final touch up for for you for the final five or six percent or ten percent of a battery capacity. So we have a detailed instruction. How do you set up a parameters? So those just it still follows the traditional charge curves, but uh, is different uh, uh, in terms of the charging capacity at the first stage of a bulk charge. Uh, we also uh, want to talk about the, the uh, uh, discharge curve. So that's the discharge curve. Uh, I just mentioned that, so the advantage of uh, the lithium batteries give you very consistent power. That's because their voltage drop is very minimum. So from a full capacity run about a 54 volt and then all the way down to the uh, 50 volt, that's basically not very much uh, juice left in the batteries. So it's only like a four volt drops. And the most of the time you don't even use uh, all the way down to 50, 50 volt. Usually you add a 50, 1.5 as our uh, preference on the parameter settings. Uh, the discharge curve will vary a little bit. It, it depends on your discharge rate. So 0 0.2 C on top, and then uh, you see the, the quicker you discharge, and then the end of the, the uh, charge curve are gonna drop the, the quicker. So we try to utilize the best part of the lithium battery. We try not to use the last part, and people always say, okay, in the lead asset, I'm gonna 
uh, change a little bit of voltage to juice out a little bit more capacity out of a lithium, uh, out of uh, the lead acid battery. That's not the case for the lithium. So when customer asks me, can we do this? I said, don't do it because there's not much juice in the end of the, at the end of the charge curve. It's only give you three, five percent. And then you put you yourself on a high risk of uh, short the uh, life expectancy of the battery. So don't do it. And they try to use that, uh, utilize the uh, best part of it. If you size up a battery system correctly, the uh, lithium battery give you a lot of capacity uh, at their uh, discharge platform. So voltage has some impact. We never recommend to use under zero, right? The best voltage, the best, uh, but for most of the uh, home energy storage system, so your temperature is at 75, so falling ahead, so it's pretty mild for the, uh, a pretty mild and good for the chemistry of a lithium battery. So that's just as your inference, uh, reference. So if the temperature is too low, try not, not to put it outdoor. So it's indoor always. If uh, you put in some cold place, I encourage you to, to think about putting an enclosure and also uh, buy a 50 watt or 100 watt uh, the enclosure heater, it's just in terms of the winter usage. That's what we, uh, we do for the railway system as well. Uh, life cycles, I just mentioned, so the more you discharge the batteries and the, the shorter the life cycle is. Okay? So we don't want to look at everything under 75, but at over 75, and so it clearly give you the indication. So the less uh, depth of discharge you use, the longer the life cycle will be. So follow our instruction for the parameter, which I'm going to come into that slide, and then you'll be uh, okay for the uh, parameter settings. Uh, different inverter has uh, different manuals. Uh, so I always recommend that you go to their user manual and look at uh, their manual map and then try to figure out uh, what you want to set up first before you go to uh, their screen or apps, try to configure everything out. You might have a good chance to make mistakes. Uh, they always have a flood asset and lithium and all kind of different selections. So, but fundamentally we want you to set up at the uh, recharge voltage at least at 51. Right, that's where uh, we think the uh, uh, where the discharge and the charge curve is, is the best part of it, based on our chemistry and then uh, the cell manufacturer uh, specification. And then on the bulk voltage, what maximum we want to set up a 54.6. Usually, uh, if you use the E volt, then uh, they already tell you you're at 100 percent. But if you want longer your life cycles, uh, you can derate a little bit on 0.2 point voltage and then which will put even longer uh, uh, life cycles on those things. Absorption, the same thing. And uh, there are some inverter will tell you it's so a low battery cutoff and high battery cutoff. So that's the two uh, numbers you want to put into uh, the system. We don't, we don't have any, we don't need, no, we don't need. So we don't want you to set up any floating voltage. So this doesn't apply to the uh, lithium battery. That's usually for the lead acid batteries when they have a self-consumption. You want to constantly bring them back up to the voltage you want. So for lithium, the losses is very, very minimum, so you don't have to consider those things. And the max charge current, uh, if you follow our installation calculation, uh, it's not much, concern, not much concern, but if you choose to go with one inverter or one small battery ba uh, pack, for special purpose, you want to derate your charge current tool to meet our battery specification, which you can find on our website. There's a very detailed specification for each section. Okay, that's what I just mentioned. So you want to do uh, the, uh, you want to, if you follow our instruction, you have no problem. Uh, if you, uh, you have a special setup with one inverter, one battery bank, only for special purpose, you want to look at the, our specification first on the battery and to turn up your uh, inverters uh, charge and discharge uh, uh, ratings. Usually it's uh, adjustable. Uh, if you want to do some uh, self-supply, demand the curtailment and so on, we do have the function or software to do it. Uh, let us know, you have to contact us and then we're gonna uh, walk you through project by project. Uh, for example, for Demand uh, curtailment. So I know some region has a demand charge. You receive thousand dollar electric bill, and you also receive thousand dollar for the demand charge. So we have uh, our own software. We can uh, 
we can help you to do this with our batteries. Uh, let, uh, let us know what's your project. Uh, we would like to have you uh, work through all those things. Uh, it's a little bit complicated because uh, we have to collect a whole bunch of data from a customer and then do analysis and to size up your system correctly and also make sure the software functions as well. So for a special application, let us know. So we're, we're going to help you uh, uh, on the case by case basis. Uh, the last part is uh, we, we try to do some uh, sales features here. So if you want to uh, sign up for the authorized the installer, so we'll give a certain benefit and then the process is relatively easier. You just need to fill out the, the dealer application, we receive it, and then we'll give you trainings. Once you get uh, over one or two trainings, usually not that difficult and understand how our system works, how the battery works, and then we're gonna uh, uh, give you a, a authorized installer uh, certificate so you will get the uh, uh, full-time support from us you have a, a good discount you will receive uh, the discount information from the emails or mails but there's a whole lot of uh, uh, information uh, we're gonna push to you just uh, try to enrich your lithium batteries knowledge as well thank you very much that's pretty much uh, my presentation is for today so uh, uh, we successfully controlled that one under one hour I think we're still on time. Uh, I'm gonna turn this to Jamie, our marketing manager, uh, to talk about the rest if uh, she has. Okay, thank you, Eric. Uh, we do have some questions here. So yes. Um, what Wi-Fi speed reliability do you need? How many weeks of data storage? Uh, I think you talk about the, the uh, uh, talk about the eFlex new product. So the Wi-Fi, if you have a house whole house Wi-Fi system, uh, that will just work with uh, our 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 eFlex because the Wi-Fi, what the Wi-Fi does is our Wi-Fi two function. Once you can use Wi-Fi to look at the, our app and then to see what's happening in your batteries, and the second is uh, the Wi-Fi. If you allow the deep, battery Wi-Fi connect to your home Wi-Fi. So we're gonna hook you up on our background monitoring system. Uh, we haven't talked about it officially in any uh, marketing activity yet, but our goal is uh, we try to watch the battery for you instead of you watch your batteries. So we try to uh, detect the issues or tell you if your system works or not. We hope uh, we never bother you, but if you hook up the monitoring system, we're gonna give you uh, some uh, proposal about the system and then we're gonna also build up a preventive maintenance plan for you if necessary. And uh, in terms of the uh, memory card, so we don't have uh, the uh, whole lot of capacity on the memory chip, but uh, it's good enough to record some major event happened on the on the batteries. So it's gonna, it's, it's going to store good amount of information and push up on the uh, cloud. It's not accessible for the uh, homeowner or the installer. It's a part of a function we build on the BMS for the uh, major event recording. But you still can, we can give you the BMS software and you can put the information out to see, to diagnostic, okay, so what's happening in the system? Maybe you have a inverter and so on. It battery will tell you what did the inverter did to me. So. <laughs> those kind of function. Okay, uh, Drew is asking, what is the cost per kilowatt hour cap? Uh, you need to ask a sales. Uh, I'm really not the very familiar, the selling price in the market. I I, I propose we uh, refer this uh, question okay. to sales. Uh, Drew, Should... I will have a salesperson get back to you on that. Yeah. I'll make sure that they get back to you. Uh, Penn is asking, is the Evolt NEMA 3R rated? No, it's not the NEMA 3R rated. It's uh, only for indoor purpose. But if you want to use for outdoor, that's the new product will serve your function. So IP65 is way over NEMA, uh, NEMA 3. So you want the, if you have a specific product, let us know. So we're going to help you uh, to choose the right product. Okay, uh, another question is, what is the off-grid hours? How is this calculated? Uh, well, that's a back to the uh, uh, our slide. So off-grid hours, um, what you can do is, uh, there's always a free website in each state, I believe. 
and you go on it, you can uh, calculate the, the daily radiation from history data, and you can look at how much PV production you are supposed to have in this area. So it gives you a ballpark understanding of how this PV production based on the weather locally. And then with all those information, you want to size up your PV system first, and you want to calculate, okay, whatever you want to put on the critical load. And then uh, you want to size up a critical load. Uh, you size up the battery bank according to your critical load usage. Right? That's the way to do it. It depends on how many days you want to cover. Uh, it's, you have to look at the case by case. So a lot of customers will size up at least two days without any PV production. Right? That's the way. They said that if I don't, I'm off grid, and then uh, I don't have any sun come out raining or what, then uh, I need to live on this battery system for two days. So that you, you need to look at the case by case, but the, the resources you can access is a free website. I forgot the name of it. If you Google it, I'm pretty sure you get it. Let's tell you the local uh, solar radiations and then what the, the uh, PV production will give to you, how many powers. And then uh, when you design the system, second is that you want to ask your customer what they want to put on the critical load. And based on that, and then how many days they need to be off grid. If there's no sun, then you set up your battery bank. Okay, uh, Manuel is asking, can you combine an e-volt with a 10 kilowatt hour model? Uh, no, so quick question is no. So just uh, some uh, information about it. For any battery, once you put it in parallel, you want to make sure the, not only for Tristan, so even the lead acid or everything else, you, you don't want to mismatch the capacity. That, that's the big no-no, right? So what happened is, uh, when battery, one battery is already charged full, the other battery is still kind of halfway to go, and the one battery is still charging the other battery, so it's going to trigger the BMS issue, it's going to damage your cell, it's going to have a whole bunch of issues, so no mismatch. Same product, uh, it doesn't matter, so if you have, have a second battery come online in a month or two months later, if it's the same battery, you should be able to, able to parallel them. But we don't recommend you for the LP10 and LP5, uh, you, you add up the batteries after two or three years or one year or even longer. And we need to do some special setting on the parameters. So, but for the EVOD, you really can add up a second one by setting up the parallel settings. Uh, the BMS will help you to, to control two, two batteries. Okay, yes. uh, mm -hmm. we have another question from Arturo. In mm -hmm. a three-phase system with three-phase loads, how do you yes. connect a single-phase inverter to obtain a three-phase system and keep the 120 degrees phase-to-phase -phase angle? Or are okay. there three-phase inverters available? If so, who are they? Okay, so question is uh, uh, very good questions. So, so I give you let's let's talk on this uh, in in uh, two ways. So. Uh, if you have a three-phase requirement, and then uh, we can support you with the existing three-phase uh, inverter and also uh, customize the uh, three-phase battery system. That will be the, a small container, outdoor solution, like give you 30 kilowatt powers on three-phase, three-phase uh, battery-based uh, battery inverter plus a 60 kilowatt hour, maybe a little bit more if you want, and then uh, to support you on the special project. That's one way to go, right? So there's a special product uh, we can talk about. It. You can contact us. With existing system, so if you look at the, uh, uh, for example, Schneider, Thorarc, or the Autobag, so they all have a technical note of how to uh, stack their system to the three-phase uh, three uh, setup. I will, I can't remember all of them. Uh, so the single, not a single, the simple answer is uh, on each phase, you pair up a two or three inverter as you need it, and then they make a three phase system. Uh, I will send you uh, one or two link about the, the Schneider and Outback setup. Uh, so I think it will go with the meeting uh, uh, meeting minutes later, so together with slides. So you, you need to, we need to look into more details on the instruction manual. It's really more about the, how do you set up an inverter system. But for the battery system, usually go on the same bus bar, then you have a 48 output for all the inverters on the three phase. That's how they set it up. Okay. Okay. Uh, we have another question. Uh, can you charge from a generator? Yes. Quick answer. No, 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 you can, 
Well, yes or no? You can charge from the generator, uh, but you have to go through the uh, inverter because the generator give you AC output, and then the the inverter is going to rectify that to the DC, and the DC is going to charge the uh, uh, the battery. Actually, that's one of the function for most of the inverter in the market. Uh, Schneider Outback and Sorg, I think they all have it. So you can, but you cannot use the uh, generator charge the uh, uh, charge the the battery directly because it doesn't match DC AC. Right? You need some uh, something in between. You need a rectifier to rectify the AC to DC. Okay. okay. I have a question from Michael. AC coupling. The PV yes. inverter, not the PV array, will determine the PV inverter AC output. Why are you concerned about the PV array size? We'd like to AC couple 10 kilowatt SE inverters, and they mm -hmm. and the array is often 15 kilowatts. Why are you concerned about using a 12 kilowatt hybrid inverter in this configuration? Uh, okay, I think maybe my uh, my slide is a little bit misleading. So the whole point on that thing is uh, we want that the storage section uh, is. Uh, bigger than whatever you on the PV section. So I'm saying PV array, maybe I should be more specifically to talk about the, the, uh, the PV array and your PV inverter. So you just want to make sure if a PV inverter is a six kilowatt and then uh, your Schneider is 6.8, that's a good match. So those are the major concern we have, but you are correct. So when you set up a PV system on the uh, without a storage before, so that's pretty much the consideration you already have. So you want to set up the PV array slightly over than the uh, inverter can take. But usually, you know, you don't get 100% of efficiency from uh, the, uh, the PV panel. Most of the inverter company actually PV inverter company uh, let you do a little bit oversizing. You are correct. So I think that you are more more or less look at the PV inverter instead of uh, the PV array. The whole point on this is uh, to, to avoid overproduction. And then once the uh, the storage inverter try to trigger the uh, PV inverter shut on, on and off, it, it's not really good uh, customer experience because the lights are on and off a little bit. So we don't want that to happen uh, too often. So that's the purpose how why we mentioned on the AC coupling system. Okay, we have a, a question from Ravi. At high ambient temperature, say 60 degrees Celsius, what is the temp rise on the battery at one degree Celsius, at one C discharge rate? Uh, I don't have this information on top of my head, but uh, I can get back to you on this. this I need to look at uh, the, the original test data on this. Okay. Um, yeah. The next question we have is, from Jason, can we mix parallel LFP five kilowatt and ten kilowatt battery into one combiner bus bar for multiple yeah. inverters to pull from? Okay, so th that's what I just mentioned. So no mismatch. So it must be the same model, uh, same capacity fundamentally, right? So that's the way you use it. So mismatch will cause a lot of issues. It, it's actually. I don't think the system will, will work if you combine 10 kilowatt hour with five kilowatt hours. Uh, no. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, another one from Jason. Do you plan or is closed loop communication in the works for the Outback inverters? Uh, we are uh, not not uh, starting yet, but we're doing that with uh, Schneider and also uh, SOARC at this moment. So that's the next step we're going to uh, Build up the closed loop communication with uh, all the back. And actually, we, we had a technical meeting like a week ago to talk about it, how we want to do it. Okay. Uh, Ron has a question. Uh, in an AC coupled setup, does the battery system communicate with the PV inverter to prevent overcharging the system? If so, what commands does the battery inverter battery uh, inverter battery system give to the PV inverter? Uh, uh, no, so the uh, the overcharge control uh, on the battery side, right? We don't want to overcharge over discharge. That's all controlled by the uh, battery based uh, in water. So that means, for example, the Schneider, the Schneider configuration, right? The the charger configuration and then the uh, discharge configuration. That's what you set up there to protect your batteries. 
And uh, what it happened is uh, between the uh, Schneider and the whatever you have at uh, the PV inverter. So there is uh, no communication as well. But uh, once the, uh, for example, if you grid tie system, once the, uh, uh, they say that too much power come to the uh, uh, inverter, the storage inverter actually is gonna uh, shift the frequencies. For example, in the US 60, so he might shift up and down to simulate right, what's something wrong on the grid. If you, you don't have the storage function, that's what happened. The grid frequency is changed and then the PV, PV inverter shut down. So that's the way they do it. So I think they do that. Uh, um, I think all of the inverter company does the same thing, including SMA, including uh, Schneider and all back. They all use the sh frequency shifting to, uh, to trigger on and off to regulate the PV production uh, in the system. Uh, I'm not expert on this, but if you have more questions, uh, you can definitely ask Schneider and then uh, Outback engineer. They will give you more detailed answers on those. Okay, we have a question from Anish. Uh, does Evolve 18.5 have an integrated EMS controller? Uh, no, the EMS uh, controller need to be separate. So if you have a I think you talk about the demand, uh, demand shaving those things. If your customer has a, a requirement for those kind of product, let us know. That's the third part. That's the third devices. Uh, is the gateway. Uh, we try to connect multiple dots and then uh, control the inverter as well to help you to shave off the demand charge. Okay, and I have one last question here from. Jason, do you support external 48 volt DC charge controllers for LFP batteries? If we use a certain charge controller, do you have a list of approved manufacturers that will not void your warranty? Uh, most, let me put it this way. So as long as uh, your charge controller can configure with the, the uh, voltage current, uh, so, so to say certain protection on the parameter settings, it should be okay with uh, the batteries. Uh, if you don't have it, it's just a dummy charge controller with 48 volt. That's something we don't recommend to use because we really don't, cannot control uh, the life cycle, everything with the parameter settings. And just a follow up to that question, if our preferred charge controller is not on that list, can we send you their information so they may get approved? Yes, then you can always send information over, also including the inverter. Right? You can also uh, send the, the inverter specification over. Then we're going we're gonna to look at it, tell you how it works with our system. We got a couple more that just came in. Uh, Franz asked, can your product be connected to existing microinverter systems? Uh, you need to do AC uh, couple system with that. Okay, and this one is the last one from Rob. How might Fortress foresee vehicle to home charging capabilities integrated into battery system in the future? Uh, I think that's a very good question. Uh, we, we talk about the with, uh, uh, my background is from the automotive. So uh, it's, uh, we see that's uh, still a separate function with the uh, EV vehicle chargers. Uh, I mean, EV vehicle charger is, is nothing but a charger. So it's, it doesn't make sense we uh, integrated things to the system because uh, you will definitely increase cost for the for the customers and so on. I mean, uh, it's just separate components. It's a simple connection. And we don't have a plan to do this with our batteries. Okay, I think we have everybody. Uh, if you didn't get your questions answered, we will have a sales team go through these questions and they will answer anything that um, was not answered at this webinar. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you. All right. Thank you.